Welcome. Welcome to Shade and the City. I am your girl, Treese. It's now. And today we are here to do our recap of the Braxton season one, episode two. This one is not, at least in my opinion, was not as hard. I did not, I actually did not cry. It was hard to watch. It was still a hard watch um, because of the whole sister breakdown and dynamics. And I mean, Nell's had a whole conversation offline about it. It's definitely difficult to see family turmoil. Um, but I'm I'm hoping that they're showing us this and showing us how they're working through it and working out. But it was, it, at least in my opinion, it was a little lighter for me. Um, some people did not feel the same as I know. Shade Squad and um, all of our new viewers, if you haven't already, please make sure you hit that like button. And that subscribe button. And before we get into it, I just want to give a special shout out to the Outthinkers for jumping in the comments, sweetheart them, um, as well as Danielle All Natural. This girl, homegirl, did when didn't didn't even watch the show, but she tuned into the review, and I could really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And while we're still a you know touchable community, I want to recognize y'all before we have like a thousand comments, and I ain't got it to do. So you know, keep it you know while we still touchable you know but yeah y'all so let's get into this recap of the braxton's i think it was called something about healing or something like healing that time. yeah um and yeah let's get into it and let's get shady maybe not so much All right, y'all. So we open up the episode. We know we're still in a therapy session with Spirit and all the sisters and Mama E, as well as Kevin Jr. And um, I forgot what they call the daddy. We're just going to call him daddy, but daddy Braxton, right? So um, the Spirit is basically asking uh, Mama Evelyn how she feels, um, how she's dealing with her grieving. And she says that she feels, basically she feels pain for her grandson, Kevin, um, and so she's like, well, how are you dealing with your own feelings? And so she says that, I, I really like what she said, because she said, you know, there is no preparation for losing a child. There's there's no preparation for that. Um, and she says that, you know, and she admits to her girls that as a mother, um, she talked about a few experiences in Tracy's life where she thought she was going to lose her. Um and she survived and she said, and I realized this one time I was not going to be able to save her. And so she started to pray for her suffering to end, um, which I thought was really big. Like it just really goes to show her faith. Like, and at the end of the day, you know, I may want her here physically, but if it's hurting her to be here, I can't be selfish. And I thought that was big. Um, so, and she said that Tracy even comes to visit her. Um, she knows that despite of how fine she is, and again, I love the comedic relief in these very hard, tough moments, she has to get up out of here at some point, you know? Um, so she knows that they'll see each other again. I, I, I Shouts out to Mama E. I thought it was so beautifully well said. And I don't know if she's been through therapy. I don't know. Again, maybe it's just her faith or what she has going on, but I feel like when dealing with the grief situation, I think she's grieving more like for her grandsons and her kids. And she's probably accepted it a little bit more um, than most of them have. And she also mentions that she was there when she took her last breath. Um, so Tawanda reflects on, you know, remembering the last time they were all together celebrating Tony's birthday and Tracy had complained. You remember that episode? And um, I feel like I remember watching it too because I remember the wigs. Um, but I remember uh, um, Tony in her had on mask because yeah, and stuff because of her. She has lupus and, and yeah. So, um, and she was con you know complaining about her you know burning when she swallowed. So she told her you need to go see a doctor. Um, when she got back home, and that's when she learned that she had esophageal cancer, which was stage three. 
um, and was, you know, but Tracy was determined to beat it. Um, and she definitely gave us that spirit. Um, I think we saw that on the show. Um, look, damn, I might get emotional now, but, but more than I did watching it. But anyway, so, um, you know, and then they share footage of them spending time with Tracy during her last days. So I just want to put out there, I did make a remark. I felt like Trina might have been a little, whatever, um, resentful because nobody was helping her. And we learned that that was false. So I just want to put that out there and clear that up, that I was wrong in that. And that all the sisters were very present with her. It seems like they took turns. They all did things together. And they actually became very close. Um, you know, because as uh, Tony would say, they would tell her, oh, it's eight days. It's going to be in a two days. And, and Tracy would outlive. She was very determined to be it. Um, and so she, you know, lived longer than the doctors told her, told them that she would. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just thought, I think it was beautiful. And it's actually, to Aunt Evelyn's point, I think it's so sad to see how they came together in her past or, you know, as she was declining. Um, and now they're so separated after the fact. And um, it goes to Tony's point that, and I mean, she'll say it earlier, but I mean, later. In the episode, but it really goes to show just how much of the glue Tracy was to this family. So, um, Trina, you know, after speaking about all this, she ended up breaking down and said Tawanda was right when she said that she wasn't strong enough to watch Tracy take her last breath. Um, Tawanda said that she just knows how sensitive Trina is and said, um, you know, those are the type of things that scar you for the rest of your life. And said that, um, you know, she can't. Basically, she can't lose the weight, okay, because she is eating everybody's emotions, including hers, and she got to have a drink. Or I love, I love what she said. She said, if I have two martinis or 12, I said, girl. That's, that's, that's what it takes. Mm -hmm. um, she said she doesn't want to deal with the darkness of her own thoughts because it's a lot. Um, and, there, uh, and Spirit um, told her, you know, she's not dealing with grief. Um, Basically, she's dealing with PTSD. Okay, and she needs treatment. Tawanda said that she deals with grief and uh, death differently. She believes Tracy's still here, just not in a physical form. And, you know, that gives her peace. Trina said that it bothers her that they're not connected. Talking about, you know, all the sisters. Um, mm -hmm. The way they were before Tracy's passing. Um, Trina says that she misses her friend. And the kooky stuff that she used to say that basically... Only she understood. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, she was the double stick glue, but she doesn't even think that um, that she realized it, that Tracy even realized it. Um, Tony said that, you know, she's in her angry stage, definitely not her acceptance, okay? She said she suppresses it because she feels like that's what she's supposed to do. She's the oldest. Um, and it's really hard for her to ask her family for support when it comes to talking to them about things because um, she's expected to be the strong one and the invincible one. She said, really, she was angry at God because she thought it was unfair that Tracy was sick and dying. And she's the one that had lupus. And, you know, we know she's been struggling with that for years. Uh, Spirit asked her, um, basically, you know, she's the oldest and she always will be. Um, you know, how she's supposed to work on her grief if she always has to be strong. And she said through her music, you know, that's how she sells mm -hmm. medicine. She said their parents did a fantastic job of teaching them, um, you know, the core family, but really not the best job of letting them live. Individualism, like individualism. Yeah. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Individualism. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, she said she felt a sense of responsibility for them. Um, and sometimes she even put her sisters ahead of her kids and she had to learn um, not to do that. And Tawanda apparently 100% understood. understood. So, <sighs> I don't know. This, this Just the fact that this whole episode, the whole last episode was like a therapy session. It was, it was definitely a lot. It's heavy. Um, I, yeah, it's heavy. Um, so then Tawanda pivots. She wants to check in with uh, Daddy Braxton as well as Kevin Jr. about what their thoughts are. Um, he says that he wants to, you know, basically daddy Braxton says he wants to learn. 
basically what his kids are going through, like hear their thoughts um, and, you know, be a part of their healing process. Like I said, I don't know if this is an older church folk thing and faith thing, but him and Miss Evelyn just seem really at a better space knowing that their daughter is no longer hurting. Um, whereas I, I can tell you that's why I struggle with grieving is because it's the physical for me. I could tell you, I could talk to you every Tuesday in the spirit realm in my dreams, but if you ain't here physically, that's going to be the, what's going to do it for me. So hence why I'm going to uh, embalm nails and put her in my living room in a box so I could still go. If anything ever happens, I'm still going to go talk to her right downstairs in that box. Definitely for you, I have a will. So that's, that's how, that's, that's not a part of my will. I'll take a toe or something. So um, anyway. <laughs> so anyway, or, you know, I wish I could just freeze you like Michael Jackson. and just come talk to you, you know, have a big, you know, I'm sorry. Sounding real weird now. Sorry. I Again, I don't grieve well. Now, now you're sounding real weird. <laughs> like I tell y'all, I don't grieve well. That's why nobody has me in their will to handle their arrangements because they know. I'm going to keep you. You're going to stay here in any shape, form, or fashion. Literally. All right. Um, so basically, Kevin Jr. said that he's hurt every day. He feels he's lost part of himself. He says he's not only grieving his mother, but also grieving the loss of his marriage. He said that Olivia served him with divorce paper before the two uh, divorce papers before the two year anniversary of Tracy's passing. Um, and then Kevin is interrupted by a do knock on the door. Uh, and we we hear basically like conversation. We know it's like law officials. It's not like Uber Eats, nothing. It's something serious. And so Tamar is like, well, that sound like the police. Why do you sound like you're talking to the police? And um, basically she's confused as to what's going on with Kevin. We can see little taps and sisterly gestures. I felt like I know what it means when nails tap me and I tap. We know, we know when they'd be like, shut up. Don't say, or that's when this is the right time to say what you need to say. Like, we know what the taps mean, okay? But uh, Tamar didn't know what they meant, so she feels left out. And I can understand her feeling that way. And she, you know, accuses them. And she's like, there's just so many secrets. Um, and basically, Trina lets her know that this isn't the forum, basically, to discuss Kevin's business is what I got. And, um, and, so then Trina was like, well, you knew what was going on and why I know it. And she was like, because it's not my place to tell you his business. And to that point, I think she touched on that. She said that she had met with him several times and he didn't say anything to her. So I can understand the other aunts feeling like if he didn't open up to you and you actually saw him, we are just on the phone with him. You actually saw him and he didn't talk to you. He don't want you to know. Mm hmm. And I understand them respecting that. It's not, I know it sucks because Tamar, she's doing the Pisces thing. She wants to be there. She's trying to like, and they're, but he's not letting her in for whatever reason. So um, then, like I said, she's talking about feeling left out. Spirit asks how they feel. And Tony admits that the energy is just weird. And everybody just all of a sudden, once that phone call and situation happened with Kevin, is on the defense. Uh, meanwhile, Tawanda, um, gets off, you know, Mama E is like, go check on Kevin Jr. So she gets off the couch. She's going to call him, trying to figure out what they're charging him for. Um, and she returns and admits that the cops were at the house because Tamar is not letting it go. Um, and they said, you know, someone, she says that someone an anonymously called and let the police know that he had a warrant. Um, so he had to turn himself in to figure out what the warrant was about. Uh, Tawanda thinks that Kevin was set up by someone close to him. I know what she wants to say. She's just not being petty and saying it. And that's how tactful Tawanda is. Because I think if it was Tamar, she'd say it. Oh, that dirty bitch, Olivia. <laughs> I think she'd say it. Yeah, she definitely would. Mm -hmm. So she, she said it's too coincidental. Right. Um, and yeah, and so basically at this point, Tony suggests that maybe they circle back and reconvene with each other later. Tamar says that she's done, and she's like, why we got to do this again? I've done my own counseling, done my own healing, and says that, you know, she has boundaries up to protect her mental health, as we know. Um, Tamar has struggled with that, and we've seen that um, mm -hmm. air, unfortunately. Um, so Tamar says that, you know, she's no longer 
you know, it no longer serves her. That's how I said, you know, she went when she said no longer serves me to beg for sisterhood, time or friendship. And I said, well, I understand you, girl. And the price is in me. I ain't doing that either in this lifetime. If you don't come, you don't come. And guess what? I'm just saying. Um, so Tony apologizes if she made Tamar feel that way and says that Tamar has admitted that she's felt, you know, basically left out before because she did. They go to a clip back in 20, I think 13, where they show her expressing the same thing, how nobody reaches out to her. She feels left out. Trina says that she does show up for Tamar. Um, when she and she said nine out of ten when she calls, she's there. They she goes, sees her, but what Trina is pissed about, and this is why I say I feel like I'm more Trina, because I hate, I absolutely hate generalized conversations. Now, I can admit when I'm wrong about something, but what I hate is a generalized conversation, and you're just not saying who you're speaking to. Just say who it is. Put a name on it. Because well, I don't like being in a room having to have conversations that ain't got nothing to do with me, for real. For they ain't got to put a name on it, because the Virgo. Tawanda, but that's what I'm saying. Who she was talking to and spoke up, but would as a Virgo, would that not piss you off if we're sitting around and I'm talking about my feelings and I'm insinuating about you instead of saying Chanel made me feel this way? I don't know oh, I don't know. That would I'm gonna feel like you're a punk. I'm gonna feel like you're a punk. Your punk ass don't want to put a name on it, so I'm gonna leave your punk ass where you are till you put a name on it. I ain't got shit to say. I'm not even going to engage. What I'm what I'm engaged with a little pussy bitch for. Oh, okay. When you get some balls, we can talk about it. No. Mm -mm. No. Um, but basically, um, yeah. So said, this this hit dog ain't gonna holler. <laughs> I'ma lay there and play dead and wait for the ambulance to come. <laughs> you didn't even hit me. Put a name on it. Then 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 maybe I might feel something. But you ain't right. even hit me. Um, you know, you make valid points. If you can't address me, I'm not going to address you. I get you. I ain't about to get upset. It's not, worth, it's not worth the mental health feeling like somebody's addressing you and you don't yeah, know you, it. You're you going to the air at this point. Yeah. Right. Well, well, that's see. valid. That's valid. I'm going to give you that. So, yeah. So, Spirit asked them, you know, how it feels not to have access to their sister. Tamar told them to be honest and said, y'all don't care. They don't care, okay? Tawanda said that she respects people. Um, and, you know, she doesn't engage, okay? She doesn't pour into certain types of energy. That's Can I be that. honest? What? It's so messed up because I do like to, of course, I, she's a Pisces. So I do like, you know, um, do I like everything she does? No. However... I feel bad because I do think that she is somewhat trying to work on herself. As we know, she has been through therapies, spiritual, whatever. Um, however, I believe Tawanda has done her own. And that's a tough. When you've worn yourself on people so much that by the time they have an awakening or a healing or and they decide that a part of my healing is not dealing with you even though now you decide that you want to deal with them, I'm sure that hurts. Mm -hmm. Cause I think that's where Tawanda's at. Yeah. It's part of my healing is just not dealing with you. You're my sister. I love you, but we don't have to have a relationship. And whereas Tamar has been, you know, she's not who she was when we first saw her on TV. Mm -hmm. However, she still thinks because she's the baby that, so you have to forgive me. I made a mistake or, and I think to Wanda's wall is just, I'm, I'm not doing that no more. That that's my boundary. And you have two people with very set, and it sucks because they're sisters, but I do understand where Tawanda's coming from. Yeah. Well, Tawanda said that she's focused on her relationship. So we were right. She is in a relationship um, mm -hmm. and her children and, you know, just people in her household, Tamar told her Tony and Trina are not in your household, but you call them all the time. Okay. You don't answer the phone when I call. The only reason why you answer the phone right now is because we tape it. Tawanda said that's not true. Okay. Every time she calls 
and text. She answered. She said she got receipts, but her word is bond. She don't. She don't need to show nothing. Okay. You either believe her or you don't. Now, Miss E is pissed. Okay. She said that they're acting like enemies. Um, and you know, ask them, do you really realize how short life is? Like, right, y'all sister, life is short, okay. So she said, even Tracy told um them that basically, uh, you know, if they continue to argue, that she would haunt them. Like that ain't mean nothing to you. Your sister was even even in her, her last her day, time, she was worried about y'all, yeah. Exactly. A fight and argument. So she got up. She walked out. She wanted to go check on the food. She ain't. She she ain't got yeah, it. Let me go check on these ob sales. And um, spirit, you know, she's just hopeful that this is the beginning of the healing, and you know, feels that they heard what their mama said. But Miss E know better. Miss E said, "You know how long I've been talking to these girls." And like I said, I I I was telling Nels before we got up here. I had seen. And I don't know if it was just, you know, blogs post things at certain times or they find certain clips to repeat, to paint a narrative. But I told her, I, maybe because I watched that before going into watching this and I saw the clip of them with the Yanla and how combative Tamar was and how hard it was for all of them to talk to their sister, this one sister. Because I feel like Tawanda and Tracy... Trina and all of them could have figured something, but she's like, and she wants to be seen. She wants to be heard. I get it. You're the baby. You, I don't know. I don't know. It's so many things. It's so many things with her. And I just think that I'm going to be honest. As I told Nels, my boo was in the background listening. She can be exhausting. And I think that, and that's what I was I was saying to Nels before we got up here is like sometimes being self aware, and sometimes being a good friend or a good, you know, just sister. You don't. Yes, you may be going through something, but you also have to think about that other person and what they're going through. And sometimes when you just you're always the one to unload, and you always got the problems, and it's always about you. It. As Tawanda said, you're just not pouring, I, and I'm not, and I don't feel like doing that. It's always about you because you're the baby. What about me? What about my happiness? What about? So I don't know. I, I can't be mad. Y'all weigh in in the comments. I'm, I'm gonna leave it there. I'm not gonna get too deep. It is a sister dynamic at the end of the day. They family. I really hope they work it out. Um, and I just want to thank y'all for supporting because the likes was liking on the last video. So hopefully y'all can do the same. <laughs> They really was. So um, so clearly y'all enjoyed it as well for those that are tuning in. Like I said, it can be heavy for some. Um, but if you haven't already, please make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you comment. Make sure that you've subscribed. And hit the notification bell. And make sure you're following us on all the platforms, the TikTok, the Twitter, the Facebook, and the IG. And if you guys are, you know, feeling friendly and want to, you know, donate to the channel, you can support by, you know, also buying, purchasing the products, but you can subscribe, which is free 99, or you can also send us a little nice monetary gift to the, you know, cash app collection plate. But yeah, so we appreciate y'all. We thank you. And we will catch you next week for another recap of the Braxton's. Have a good night. Good night.